Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to part three on a series where I show you how to build a simple modern habit tracker called consistency. So last week, I showed you guys how to create a new React Redux application, and I explained some of the core concepts specifically about Redux Toolkit and what kind of functionality it has. So in this video, we're going to be building out two things. Specifically, we're going to be setting up the page structure, which includes routing and CSS grid. And secondly, we're going to create the basic front end for the goals section, as you can see over here. So by the end of the video, you should have gone from a blank React Redux application, as you can see here, to something that looks like this with page structure, routing, and a basic front end for the goals section. So let's get into it. Now, keep in mind that as I go through and show you guys how to build this website, I want to also kind of explain my thought process and explain why I'm going um, or why I'm building certain features and starting with certain things as opposed to others. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is I want to set up my routing so that I can redirect certain URLs to certain components. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is open my integrated terminal. Uh, if you don't know, the shortcut for that on Mac is control tilde, uh, which is the button right beside your number one on the keyboard. So we're going to CD into the front end folder. And in here, we're going to install some packages. So we'll do npm install react, react router DOM. And we're also going to install styled components. So obviously, the React Router DOM is going to be responsible for the routing of our application. And styled components are what we're going to be using to write a lot of the CSS for our components. All right, so now that those are installed, in our app.js file, I want to start setting up our routing. So to handle our routing, we're going to import some components from the React Router DOM package. So first, we're going to import browser router from React Router DOM. And we're also going to import route. So browser router is going to be responsible for basically handling the history API uh, from HTML5. And it's responsible for keeping the UI in sync with the URL. And this route component is basically responsible for rendering certain components based on what URL the user is currently at. So instead of this div, we're going to have a browser router. And within here, we're going to have a couple routes. So the first route is going to be the path for the route root directory, and the component that we want to load is going to be called welcome. And we're going to be writing this component in just a second. And then we're going to specify exact to be true. This means that only if the path is exactly just a forward slash or just empty, then we're going to load the welcome component. And we'll end that there. And we'll copy this down. And for the slash habits path, I want to load the uh, my habits component. Oh, we're forgetting equal signs here. OK, so obviously, this isn't going to work yet because we haven't written these components. So let's go ahead and do that. In our components folder, we're going to create a new folder. And the first one will be called welcome. We're going to also create a folder called my habits. All right, these are going to have the two components that we're going to be writing. In this video, I'm not going to be building out the full welcome component. I just want to focus on the my habits page. Uh, this is the main habit tracker page. So we're going to start with working on that over here. So. I'll show you guys the way that I like to start writing my components. So for example, in this welcome folder, I'll create a new file called index.js. And all this is going to do is export the default component from dot slash welcome. So let's write this welcome component. So also in the same folder as welcome, let's make another new file and call it welcome.jsx. So all the React code that we want to write is going to be in this folder for the welcome component. So first, we'll import React from React. And then I like to use functional components instead of class. So welcome is going to be a function. And it's going to return a div that just says welcome. And then let's export default welcome. All right. So all we did here was write a constant called welcome, which is a function that returns a div. So let's save this. Let's save this as well. And then in our app.js, we want to import that. So we'll import dot slash components slash welcome. So for now, let's just comment this one out and see if the welcome component loads on this slash on this default path. All right, as you can see, we have welcome here. So we know that on the default route, the welcome component does load. But one little configuration that I want to do before we move on is I want to get rid of this relative path stuff. Basically, I don't want to have to specify all these dots when I'm importing something from another folder. So for example, if, if I was in this welcome component and I had some other component from, from some other folder, I don't want to have to go dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and then 
whatever. I basically want to have absolute paths. So after doing some Googling, I figured out that the way to do this is, or I guess one way to do this is to create a jsconfig.json file. Just to make this a little more clean, let's close all these. And in the front end folder, we're going to create a new file. So this is not in source. This is in front end. We're going to create jsconfig.json. And in this folder, we can specify some configurations for our React app. So it's going to be an object because this is a JSON file. And the first thing we're going to have is compiler options. All right. Inside of compiler options, we can specify a base URL. And this base URL is going to specify what URL should our paths uh, look at to begin with by default. So we're going to specify source because all of our code is inside of our source component. And we want to also specify JSX to be React. And then after compiler options, we want to say include. And this is going to be a list of folder names. So we're going to put source here as well. All right, so let's save this. That should do it. So now we should be able to write our absolute paths. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to use the dot dot slashes every time we want to import a component. Uh, I believe we actually have to restart the server. So let's stop our server from running and let's do npm start again. Let's see if it loads. Okay, cool. So, so that's great. Now we don't have to worry about all those dot dot slashes and make sure we navigate to the right folder. And this is a good setup that I always like to use before I go deep into building a React application. It just makes your life easier down the road when you're making components in multiple different folders. So now every path that we put for an import is going to start from source. So now that we've done that for welcome, let's just go ahead and do the same thing for the My Habits component, as you can see here. So, so again, in the My Habits folder, let's make a new file, call it index.js. And this index.js is just responsible for exporting the default component from, and we'll make a folder called, sorry, we'll make a file called My Habits inside of this folder as well. New file, myhabits.jsx, same thing import react from react let's make a component or let's make a const call it my habits and it's going to be equal to a function that returns and for now we'll just do a div and put my habits just to make sure things load up and then we're going to export default my habits all right so let's save the index file as well let's go into app.js and let's import that component as well my habits copy this here. So if we type in the slash habits route now, we can see that the my habits component does in fact load. So now we have routing set up and we can start building our components out. So like I said earlier, we're going to be starting with building the my habits component because that's essentially the main functionality of the website. So I'm going to close off all these other folders. Oh yeah. So before we dive straight into the my habits component, I just want to specify some of the overall styling that we're going to have for our page, specifically the background color and the font. So let's go ahead and do that in the index.css file. For now, we're going to remove all of this font. And all I want to use is Apple SD Gothic Neo. Uh, this is the font family that I chose when I was creating the design. Again, if you haven't seen that video where I was creating the UI design for this, go ahead and check that out. It's really interesting to learn design principles as a programmer. And I think it's pretty important. So we're going to set the background color to, to FAF 7F7. So we have our background color and our font appears to be have appears to have loaded. So whenever I'm starting the development of a brand new component, or in this case, a brand new page as a whole, I really like to think from a top down perspective. So what I mean by that is I like to take into consideration desktop and responsive as well. So I just created some quick mockups on how I wanted the uh, mobile view to look for this My Habits page. So keep with this in mind, I'm going to be using our My Habits component as kind of a parent component, and it's going to be deciding whether to display the desktop or the responsive version. So let's go ahead and implement that. So first, we're going to be using styled components. So let's import styled from styled components. So instead of returning this My Habit div here, what I want to do is return a fragment. Okay, And inside of this fragment, the first thing we're going to have is a desktop container, I can't type, and we're going to say desktop in here. And we'll do the same thing for mobile. So let's set these to mobile. Okay. Now, obviously, these components aren't defined. So using styled components, we're going to create constants that 
hold these components. So we'll create one for desktop container and that's going to be equal to styled.div. So styled lets us create whatever kind of HTML elements that we want to have. So we can say style.div, we can say style.button and whatever else you want to create. So we're going to create a style.div and we'll specify back ticks. And then in here, we can specify any of the CSS that we want. Since this is a desktop container, we want to specify a media query that loads whatever's inside the desktop container based on the width of the page. So we're going to say at media only screen and we're going to set the max width. So the idea here is up to a maximum of 699 pixels. Okay. I want to set the display of this desktop container component to none. So there's obviously multiple different ways you can handle responsive views, but, but for the sake of simplicity, this is the method that I'm going to go with. We're going to copy this and we'll do the same thing for mobile container, except the media query is going to be a little bit different. So the first one says up to 699 pixels, hide this container. This one is going to say, if this, if the width of the screen is at least 700 pixels, we're going to hide this mobile container. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let me load this component. So it's loaded and as you can see, it's showing the desktop over here. So if I go into my Chrome DevTools and let's open up the responsive view. So as you can see, our width is 1228 right now. If we shrink this, so up to 700, it's still displaying desktop. But if we go to 699, it's displaying mobile. So this is how we're gonna separate, how we're gonna be showing desktop and mobile containers. So to start this off, I'm just going to be developing the desktop version. And in a future video, I'll show you guys how to develop the mobile version as well. All right. So to start things off, instead of just displaying desktop here, we're going to actually build a new component that's going to hold all of our desktop content. So we'll call the component My Habits Desktop. So inside of the My Habits folder, let's create a new folder and we'll call it My Habits. Within this, we'll create a new file, index.js. Same setup we've been doing all along with the other folders. My habits desktop.jsx. In the index file, we're going to export default from dot slash my habits desktop. Save that. It's not going to export anything because we haven't written my habits desktop yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We're also going to need styled from styled components. And let's define our main, our main constant, my habits desktop. Again, it's a function. For now, let's just put a div that says my habits desktop. We'll save that. We'll finish the import from here. And inside of my habits desktop, we have to export default. So essentially, the my habits desktop component is going to hold all of this content. So as you can see, we have a two column setup: the left column, which I'll call the navigation, and the right column, which I'm going to call the main container. So let's start creating this in our My Habits desktop component. So let's get rid of this. First, we're going to have a grid container. Remember, our grid is just a two column setup. So our first column is going to be a nav container. And our second column is going to be the main container. Now let's go ahead and define all of these up here. Now, we are going to be using CSS grid to format the layout of our page structure. So we're going to say display grid. We're going to set the minimum height to 100%. And we're going to define some grid template areas. So this lets us break out our UI into different, into different areas of the grid. So one is going to be called nav, and the other is going to be called main. All right. Now, we can, now that we've defined these two areas, we can specify how many rows and columns that we want. We can use another property called div grid template columns, and this specifies the columns that we have in our grid. So the first column is going to be 30%, which is the navigation. And the second column is going to be 70%, which is the main area. All right. So we'll do the same thing for rows, grid template rows. And we basically just want one big row. So you can think of this entire page as one really big row that has two columns. So this one row is going to be one FR. FR stands for fractional unit. So one FR is basically 100% of the entire space available. So our row is going to take up 100% of the space. We need to assign these template areas to different divs. So the first area, nav, we're going to assign to this nav container over here. So we're going to say 
grid area is nav. All right, we'll copy this and we'll say the same thing in our main container, but we'll call it main. So what's happening here is that the grid container is our parent container and it contains two different areas of the grid. One area is called the nav and that's assigned to this container, the nav container. And the other area is our main and that area is assigned to this container. So now within these respective containers, we can specify whatever content that we want inside of them. So let's take a look at what this looks like so far. Well, we can't really see anything because we didn't put any text. So let's just say nav here and let's say main here. So let's go ahead and continue to specify the CSS and make it look something like this. So first of all, inside of our nav container, we want to have a title styled component. And inside of this, we'll say the title is consistency. All right, so let's define title. It's a styled div. We're going to set the font size of the title to 30 pixels and the margin bottom 200 pixels. OK, now let's add some padding in here for the nav container. So we'll say padding top. We'll give it 10 pixels and we'll put a padding left of 100 pixels. We'll also set the background color of this area to E3. E to E3, E3, E3. This is again a color that I gotten from the design that I created. So as you can see, it's not taking up the entire 100% yet. Let's see why. Oh, it's because instead of percentage for the minimum height of the grid container, we want 100 viewport heights. There we go. Now let's add in some of this header information over here real quick. So inside of main, let's create a header container. Inside the header container, we're gonna have some header items. The first one, we can see it's my habits history, and then high. So let's do that. My habits, history, and high. Taha. So these will be other pages that I'm going to be building in the future, and we'll get to that in other videos. But let's go ahead and define these styled components as well. So for now, this is what it looks like with no styling. Let's go ahead and style these to the right side and put the spacing that's necessary in between them. So for the so for header container, we want to make it display flex. So some areas I'm going to be using Flexbox, some areas I'm going to be using CSS Grid. Typically for areas that are kind of a larger page-based structure, I use CSS Grid. And then for smaller components that are within the page, I use Flexbox. So we'll go justify content, flex end. And this is going to put this entire header container on the right side of the parent. And we'll also align items center. So, so far it looks like that, but now we need to add some padding and the spacing between each option here. So in our main container, we're going to put padding top of 10 pixels and padding right of 100 pixels. Okay, so now let's look at the spacing between each item, which is going to be inside of header items. So for each header item, we'll put padding right of 50 pixels and except for the last item. So for the last child, we don't want any padding. Otherwise, on the right side of this high Taha, we'll have some extra padding that we don't necessarily need. So let's save this and that looks okay. Let's increase the font size. Font size, we'll make it 22 pixels. So that's looking good. And now the last thing that we need to do to transform our page from what we originally have to this is to build our little goals component that we have over here. Now, the thing is, this video has already gone to about 20 minutes and I think I kind of overestimated how much programming we can actually get done in one video. So maybe for now, I'm just gonna leave this one here in the next video, I'll start developing this goals component and maybe I'll add in some of the backend structure as well so we can start creating and updating the goals as well. But we'll see when I get to that next video. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed the process of building this page. Maybe you learned anything new in terms of the styled components we were using, in terms of the routing or the page structure or any of the other code that we've been writing. So if you guys enjoyed this video or you learned anything new, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next part. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.